Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling General Linear Models Design of Experiments. And this is the second part in a little mini series within that playlist that I'm calling Estimability. And here we're going to look at the unique unbiased estimator for an estimable function. As a reminder, we're in the model setting y equals x beta plus epsilon. Uh, mean of epsilon are zero, constant variance sigma squared, covariance is zero. And as a reminder, the column space of x, so let's say this is a p by 1 vector, that means there's p columns, and the rank is less than p. Let's call it r, for instance. And so the least squares estimates for beta, there's an infinite number. It's not unique. But x times beta is unique. Anyway, so that was a previous video. So in this video, we're going to look at this function, lambda prime beta. And we're going to assume it's estimable. Then if we plug in the least squares estimate for beta for here, then this is unique. And it's the unique least squares estimate for this function. Oh, and they usually call this a function. It's a linear combination of the betas. So it's an estimable function, or if this is estimable. So let's prove it. We're going to prove it two different ways, using theorem 1 and then theorem 2, just because I think uh, mathematically it's good to have in your tool bag to see different ways to prove the same theorem. And the very last thing, we're going to touch upon what a testable hypothesis is. A lot of times you'll see theorems or statements, you know, if this is a testable hypothesis, then this follows. Well, what is a testable hypothesis? That's at the very end. We'll just touch upon it. So theorem three and theorems one and two were in part one. So if this is estimable, then this is unique uh, least squares estimate. So proof by using theorem one. So since this function is decimal. there exists a row such that it equals this. So uh, lambda prime is equal to row prime x. So it means it's a linear combination of the rows. It's in the row space of our design matrix. Suppose there exists two such rows that make that happen. So we have this. So lambda is equal to this and lambda is equal to row 2x. Now those because they both equal lambda, that says they both equal this. So what I want to do is prove a little piece within this bigger puzzle first. So we need to show that these two being equal, right, and, and they are, it implies that row 1m is equal to row 2m. There should be a transpose right there. And where m is the perpendicular projection matrix, onto the column space of x. So let's prove it this way first. Let's assume that these are equal. So let's post multiply both sides by this, generalized inverse of x transpose x, x transpose. Then we get this, but this is just uh, row 1m and row 2m. And so we've proved it this way. Now let's go back the other way, that row 1m and row 2m are equal. We, as, we assume that. And then we want to show that that implies that these are equal. So if we subtract that to the other side and right factor out an m, we get this. Now let's transpose both sides. So this stays the same, but those swap places. You know, we lose the transpose, but we gain one here. But since m is symmetric, we can leave it off. But remember that m is a perpendicular projection matrix onto the column space of x. So if you take a vector and pre-multiply it by m, it projects it down in the column space of x. But that's zero. So that means it's in the orthogonal complement with respect to the column space of x. So thus, this is in the orthogonal complement space of m and x. They're the same uh, uh, span. So this means that any vector in x pre-multiplied by this is zero, right? Because they're orthogonal. That's what this says. But we can multiply that x in and then add over the row 2x, and we get this. 
So then we've proved that little piece. And that's what the double slashes mean. It means like a, a, a little proof within the bigger proof. You know, we've finished that little concept. So now let's let beta 1 and beta 2 be least squares estimates for beta. Remember, there's an infinite number. So let's arbitrarily just pick two of them. And then, based on the least squares video I did on design of experiments, we know that a least squares estimate, oh, that should be a tilde, not a, a hat. So um, they have to equal my. That's one of the requirements. So that means x beta 1 and x beta 2 tilde are equal. So now let's look at this linear combination of beta 1 tilde. But using theorem 1, it says lambda can be written like this as a, a linear combination of the rows. But x beta 1 is my, but row 1m is row 2m, and my is x beta 2. But then this in the row space is actually just lambda. So thus proving uniqueness. So for any least squares estimator, we, this linear combination is unique. And to me, that's kind of crazy because there's an infinite number of least squares estimators we can use. But this linear combination is unique no matter which one we use. But now the last piece of this, we have to show that that lambda prime, you know, the least squares estimate for beta is unbiased. And then, then we know it's an estimable function. So the expected value of this linear combination is we expand what lambda is. That's this piece here. And the least squares estimate is defined like this. Well, this is any generalized linear or generalized inverse of x transpose x. Well, this piece is m, and we have rho and y. So we took the expectation in, and that's x beta. But the perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of x, you just get x back right here. But rho prime x is what we call lambda by theorem 1. So it is unbiased, and the theorem is proved. It is the unique least squares estimate. Now let's use theorem 2 to prove it again. So since this function is estimable, by theorem 2, we know there's a solution to this system of equations. So it has a solution for me, u. So now let's let beta 1 tilde and beta 2 tilde be any least squares estimates for beta using the normal equations. Now, when you solve this equation, I'm going to flash back here, this one right here, when you find, take derivatives of the, the least or the squared errors and then s solve it, you get something that looks like this. They're called the normal equations. And to be honest, I don't really know why they're called the normal equations, but they are. Now, every you know, the least squares estimate is the beta that solves this. But remember, if, if it's full column rank, x transpose x is full column rank, and we can take the inverse. But since this, these are not full column rank, then we have to use what's called a generalized inverse to solve this. Okay, but either way, the least squares estimate has to satisfy these equations. So what we're going to do is pre-multiply a u with, you know, one of the solutions to this times both sides. So this right here is here, you know, times a u, and then we take a u times this piece, which is what this is. Now, this piece, according to theorem 2, is lambda beta 1. Now let's do it again. So let's uh, do the normal equations, pre-multiply u1 to both sides, and Right, but we're using the second solution, beta 2 tilde, in for this instead of beta 1. This right here is lambda. So that tells us that, that these two pieces are equal, right? So they're equal to the same thing, so they must be equal. But one little caveat, we don't know how many solutions there are to this. 
So let's assume there's another solution to this equation. Then we can go through this same exercise and pre-multiply the normal equations by u2 and we come up with the same. So that proves uniqueness, that it is unique. Now also for any least squares estimator, beta tilde of beta, we have, you know, we have to show it's unbiased, which means that that function is estimable. So the expected value of this is this. We put in, according to theorem 2, we put in what lambda is, right? It's one of these. Now, x beta is my. Everything else stays the same. But this right here, x transpose m, is just x transpose. And then we take the expectation in. And the expected value of, of y, that should not be hat, it should just be y, it's a vector, is this, it's x beta. But u x transpose x was lambda, according to theorem 2. So it's done, so it's unbiased, and the theorem's proved. Now, a testable hypothesis is we're only going to touch upon it, maybe in later videos in this series we'll, we'll expand this concept, but for now we're just going to introduce it. So the definition of a testable hypothesis is a hypothesis uh, lambda prime beta, so it's a linear combination of the betas equaling some value, right? And hypothesis tests, the no hypothesis that it equals that value, and maybe the alternative is that it doesn't equal that value. So it makes sense. But this is a testable hypothesis if and only if lambda prime beta is estimable, right? And that makes perfect sense. If there, you know, we'll use a least squares estimate for beta, but there's an infinite number of those. And so if we're going to get an infinite number of possibilities equaling m, how do we test that? We can't. So we have to, you know, create criteria that makes our this estimate for this unique. And, and estimability makes that possible. So if this function is estimable, we can estimate it with a unique value, and then we can start doing hypothesis tests on it. And so that's what it means by, you know, assume it's a testable hypothesis. Now, there is one addition to this. Instead of just one linear combination, so this is a vector times this, we could actually put a matrix in front of it. And then this becomes a vector of values. So we can test like a system of equations. Uh, so Q prime consists of linear independent rows creating estimable functions. So each, each uh, component has to be estimable. And this, of course, leads naturally into what's called contrast. And this is going to be several videos from now. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.